in the heart of the ancient Nordic lands, where legends are born and heroes rise. There exists a coffee forged by warrior tradition, introducing Valhalla, a Cordoba royal coffee. With beans harvested from the sacred mountains of Central and South America, Valhalla blends the spirit of the Norse with the rich flavors of distant lands. Every sip is a journey through time, a call to the warriors of old, a medium roast perfected through the ages, bringing balance and boldness to your cup. Valhalla, a coffee that fuels the fearless, awakens the brave, and honors the tradition of the mighty warrior. Valhalla, for those who dare to conquer their day. Available now at monkeyworksus.com. Embrace the legend, drink Valhalla. Awaken your inner warrior. All right. Good morning there, folks. It's going to be your sit rep. It is August 8th, 2024, and we're coming to you live here from the Monkey Lounge in the great state of Texas as we get into the deets of what's going on around the world. You know, does this thing go hot? Like, and I mean, like, very hot. Uh, quite possible. Uh, when it comes to Israel, they have obviously a right to defend themselves, but um, they have a lot of nukes. And, uh, you know, do they try to pop something off and be proactive? Do they wait and uh, go after them? It's going to, time will tell. I think we're getting very close uh, probably by this next weekend or, or into early next week. We'll probably see Iran do what they've been telling everybody they're going to do. So anyway, we're going to look closer at all of that as well as some other details going on around the world. So let's start off here. I do want to show us in the mini and uh, just, just a heads up, looks like, the State Department is on the move, and uh, anytime, you know, this is, you just call it the Deep State Department, but they are actually uh, headed back to Baghdad. They came out, looks to be Amman, Jordan, but uh, let me see. I did catch another flight out here. There it is, State 50, which is a second State Department aircraft that looked to have been uh, in Libya. So uh, we'll look at that here on the watch list in just a minute, but got some interesting little things going on over there. The German Air Force, we'll look closer at them also because they have been reaching out and going a lot of different places. I just caught them all the way down in Africa. I've seen them in Australia. They've been here in the United States as of recent. Uh, in fact, uh, they've been very active around the world, which is not something we typically see from the Germans. So, uh, But here we have them in the Middle East. You can see this is a German Air Force bird right here. Another one right there. So we got a two ship that uh, was coming out of the same spot. Amman Jordan. That's an A four hundred. That's what that aircraft looks like. It's an Airbus, but uh, it is a you know, it's a high wing turboprop. And then of course I'm just going to show you all of the balloons. These are the German military balloons that are over Europe. And then you've got notice these two Habals, right? Six ninety eight and seven hundred parked off of Morocco out there near the Western Sahara. And let me just back up. I did have one yesterday or the day before yesterday down here. It's still here somewhere in this general region. You will show you these here in just a minute. But uh, you can see these Intel balloons, very capable and uh, very spread out. All right. And then, of course, I just want to show you the volcanic activity as we're here looking at stuff. Looks like Etna's chilled out. That was uh, popping off last time we checked in. And we've got some stuff up here in Alaska, and then obviously Japan's going hot, and then we've got several down here. So if you look at it from a volcano perspective, kind of a lot happening out there. So, okay, let's pop up Skyglass, as always, the best tracker on the planet. And uh, we've stripped out all of the trainers. We're sitting at around 256. That's after the trainers are already out. KC-135s, look at this yet again another day. We've got uh, exercise going on out here. They say they're servicing about 200 fighters in this general area. Uh, why we keep popping things off out here, I don't know, but we've got some interesting data I'm going to share with you today. 40 KC-135s. Let me go down to the Pegasus, add 7 to that, and um, actually that's not the BT. Yeah, that's actually... I, we need to miss redirect that one right there because th those uh, those are actually drones right here, the BTB2. Uh, but here we go. There's the Pegasus. All right, so we added eight more of those to it. Um, but 
Let me drop some of this down and out of the way. We look at our watch list, and uh, you're going to see that um, pretty active. Uh, those balloons, again, seem to be over the center of the United States. I don't know why they're all together like that, uh, but you'll notice some E2. That's going to be a Hawkeye. That is a, a just like an AWACS. It's a Navy platform, low-altitude one, uh, servicing that Chesapeake Bay area, kind of headed up towards the White House. Then, of course, you can see we've got uh, the Graybirds doing their intelligence gathering some E6s, a couple of those, a couple E3s out there. There's a Q9 that's doing some border protection. And uh, looks like a SAM flight that's out there as well. But uh, B-52 headed off into that same area. They're doing the exercises. And then, of course, there's some low-altitude drones, a couple of E3s. And there's yet another Intel bird over Constanta. You get down here, though, there's that little State Department aircraft we were just talking about. You can see them down into Libya, which is interesting that uh, we're putting boots on the ground there. And then there's a low altitude. That's looking at ships over the Mediterranean. It's been there for a, quite some time. And there's our that little B2 or BT B2 drone that is uh, still squawking in emergency. So all right, let's talk Intel. And the last three days, you can see, of course, we're looking very closely at Kaliningrad. There's a lot of stuff that happens in that port area that makes us very nervous, obviously. And then, of course, along Libya. Shocker. What are we doing down here? And then over Israel, you expect to see that. And we get over here to the United States, and there's, again, this very strange search pattern that piece right there, I do believe, is the Gray Birds. Uh, that's going to be that Phoenix Air, probably over that Panhandle area. But then this, again, as we kind of go around everything, just an unusual flight pattern from an intelligence reconnaissance survey standpoint. All right. All right. Let's talk drones. Now, notice you see the one going across straight over the United States. You'll see all the activity up into Utah, it looks like, and down to the southern border of California. And then as we get up a little further north, you can see low-altitude drones out over the Baltic Sea, up here to the northern end of Denmark, and then, of course, very active Q4 drone. That's a high altitude looking across Europe. And then, again, the low-altitude one over the Mediterranean. Now, this is the one that's uh, called Black Cat 6 is the call sign. It's a Navy Q4, which is interesting because I didn't know the Navy actually had Q4 drones. It's usually been Air Force. But uh, you can see them looking very closely at Israel. That is actually, uh, they've got a lot of stuff happening in Israel today. And uh, we'll keep a very close eye on that. We'll talk more about that here in just a minute. But, and of course, as always, you can see a little bit of work there off of the coastline of Japan, and then nothing down under. All right, let's talk subhunters as we get into the deets here. Now, we'll start out over in Europe. I just want to show you the one that's just right off the coast of Israel. That's out over the Mediterranean. And then, of course, you can see stuff going on out over the North Sea. And then over the U.S., this little flurry that comes out of Jacksonville is pretty that's eh, pretty common. Now, the stuff going out over the Gulf, out over the East Coast, that may actually mean something. I see a lot of just big movements. Again, Subhunters, Navy P-8s, they have a lot of different capabilities. But you can see a little blip there in Hawaii. And if I get over here to this side, I did want to just show you Southeast Asia uh, into the Philippines. Looks like there's some uh, work there. And then very active over the Persian Gulf side, right, in and out of, looks to be Riyadh. All right, that's going to be your subhunters. Then, of course, Australia headed down to Tasmania. That's pretty normal stuff, too. All right, let's talk R-135. This is SIG Intel. Remember, this is just gathering any type of stuff, stuff being transmitted from your phones, whatever. Same spots we always see them. Of course, they're just doing a little loop around. It's going to be Jake 17 around Kaliningrad. Just any kind of transmission, they're, they're gathering it. And then, of course, notice what's going on there over England. You see that little loop there? More than likely, because of what's happening in England right now, there's a lot of unrest. Uh, that is probably tied to that. Now, there's the other one here. This is mass comms. 
This means it's capturing anything and everything. Notice out over the same area, we see that exercise going on, all the fighters, right? When I show you the AWACS, they're doing the same stuff out there, mass comms. So why would you be doing that? Well, if we look at the ship traffic, it may, makes a little more sense, all right? All right, well, now let's go over here to E6. And again, the same thing. You got E6 bouncing out off the left coast, right? Same area as we've been watching and then down over the Gulf of Mexico. All right, now look at this. E6, remember they're talking to the nukes on the, on the subs. We had this sub come in the other day. It went into Norfolk and, and back out. So it was in there all of two days. And it's already back out to sea. You can see it's going to disappear here pretty quickly as it gets off the East Coast. But uh, just gives you kind of a general idea, you know, that uh, we've got a lot of assets in play right now. Now let's talk AWACS, right? See all of this off of that area. We'll look at the, the NOTAMs in a minute, the danger boxes. That's where all of the air refueler traffic is. Uh, remember, AWACS is actually advanced warning, right? So they're looking for any type of nukes. They got so many different capabilities. There's that lower altitude E2. That's that Navy Hawkeye. It looks like uh, very similar to the AWACS with the big dome on top, but uh, smaller platform over the Chesapeake. And then you can see some AWACS going on over Hawaii and then up here to Alaska. Very unusual pattern for an AWACS right there. Probably looking out over the water and then off towards Australia. I mean, Australia. Africa, <laughs> Russia. Sorry. Okay, I started. I had Alaska in my head, and uh, and Australia came out. Uh, don't know how that happens sometimes, um, but look at this broken trace. It's headed out towards the Middle East. Disappears when it gets over Saudi, so you know we're parking it there. But the fact that we're putting an AWACS into the region tells you we are worried about nukes coming out. All right. Okay, back over here to the mini. Let's talk air refuelers, and we're going to look at the Ruskies. And uh, you're going to see here, as we get into air refueling, last three days, very active again out here over the danger area, out over Hawaii. <clears throat> U.S. very active and busy. Again, I mean, if you look at what we have right now, almost 50 air refuelers up. That's a big, big number. 44, I think, over the U.S. live as we speak. You can see them down over the Gulf of Mexico, out off the East Coast. And then those big transitions across the drink, that's because we're moving F-18s, F-22s, F-35s over into the Middle East. You can see the traces, the thick trace lines going into that area. So that just lets you know, probably Amman, Jordan, if I had to guess, into Turkey and maybe a little Saudi and Kuwait, right? All right, let's get back over here. Let's talk Ruskies just for a brief minute. We want to just keep an eye on where they're headed I don't see anything into Iran. All I see are things going over the region. I see a little broken trace that drops down, but I don't think that's accurate. But notice where it does go. Into the UAE, right? Pretty unusual, all right, for the Ruskies. And you can see some uh, oh, increased traffic into China. Right, again, the Ruskies, okay? All right, let's do this. We're going to just take a look as I've got this up on my screen. I'm going to pull the air refuelers out. Look at the H60 activity. Pretty active down here in this area. Uh, we know the weather just moved out, so these guys may be coming back to base. And let me take out the EC-35s. Go down a little further, see if anything catches. Here's your helos for the H47 Chinooks. Eh, not too busy. Only eight of those up currently. So, okay, so let's do this. Let's get into, we pop over here to flight radar, but I want to take a look at, we'll start off at the White House, the Senior Living Center, and uh, just show you what we've got going on. Looks like uh, Flashbang is making a call to Maui, basically to, uh, to talk to them on their one-year anniversary. Remember, he did nothing for them. So uh, obviously this is a very uh, surgical call. I doubt he is calling anybody that's going to be mad at him for his the way he reacted. And, uh, yeah, you got the Rangers headed to uh, the Senior Living Center today. Uh, I guess, you know, I don't know. All right, a little further down, it looks like Flashbang's headed over to the beach yet again. 
So probably see a lot of that now that he is uh, sunsetting. All right. Check this out. Key Homeland Agency warns against uh, warns agents that Iran and its proxies may try to cross the border to attack the United States. You know, here at the end of the day, we already know they're here. We already know that the cartel is working with Hezbollah. Uh, they're not trying to make it across the border, folks. They're already across the border. And if the ones that uh, came in from different areas along the Middle East that we've flown in, we brought them in as well. So, uh, you know, you go over, you look at uh, this guy that just got caught inside the United States. He's probably one of thousands that are here, honestly. Uh, we have uh, this guy, this Pakistani man tied to Iran, was actually charged in a potential assassination plot against Trump and U.S. officials. There's this mugshot right there. But uh, there's going to be a lot more of this. And uh, we know that they have come across the border in droves. All you have to do is watch what's going on with all of the uh, the pro-Palestinian activity. Just You can see that they are embedded here in the United States. All right. Here we go. So speaking of all of the pro-Palestinian activity, uh, check this out. It says, Flashbang's not confident of a peaceful transition of power in the U.S. Look, this has nothing to do whether it's Trump's side or their side. Either way, the likelihood of this going hot as of, uh, you know, whoever wins or, you know, does whatever it is they do, it, it's probably going to go hot on both sides. So I, it's this right here is just, you know, just pointing out the obvious. But we need to prepare for that, folks, because I do believe that that is very um, probable that uh, we're going to probably have a, a very, um, yeah, it's just going to get very active, I think. Either way, doesn't matter who wins. I think both sides are at that point now where it's going to boil over. All right. U.S. hands Ukraine $3.9 billion in budgetary aid through the World Bank. So, yeah, we've started passing off more cash, almost $4 billion. Now, the real thing that uh, kind of puts, uh, you know, things in perspective, this will make you very mad because check this out. It says the fresh budgetary aid infusion will finance priority expenditures to include rescue workers, doctors, teachers' salaries, and public pensions and social benefits. So they're, we're basically funding all of their, their social programs, okay? All right. Can't fund our own, but uh, can't take care of our veterans, but yet we will pump $3.9 billion into Ukraine to take care of people that um, are on the dole. All right. Let that sink in. Okay, we've been talking about nukes. I just want to show you that uh, this hasn't led up. This is the Department of Energy nuke sniffer helo. You're not familiar with this helicopter. All of these right here are basically flying around to sniff the air uh, and tell us when something is there that's not supposed to be. Again, coming out of D.C., running this route right here. This was yesterday, I believe it was. Um, but now, sorry, two days ago. And then, of course, on the 5th. So it just goes to show you that they are very concerned about nukes. Okay? Very concerned. All right. Now, we talked about this danger box. we got some interesting ones that we're going to look at from the NOTAM perspective. NOTAM means notice to airmen. It's uh, similar to TFR, temporary flight restriction. But I just noticed you got a lot of activity out here in Hawaii. All of this off the coastline. These two may be tied together. These are danger boxes tied to also an exercise, but um, it is very active. And so if you want to kind of figure out, all right, well, um, what, you know, we've got obviously fighters out there. We've shown you AWACS. We showed you the E-6 Tacomos. Um, look, here's, uh, you can even look, we've got B-52s flying out, out of Barksdale Air Force Base, out to that general area as well. That makes zero sense to me why you'd put a bomber out over that general area, but um, it's just a data point for you. As you get into this, you can look at the ships that are out over in this general area. This is uh, U.S. government vessels also out in this general region. Now, what kind are they? Well, let's just take a look. It looks like, uh, well, I will tell you, quite frankly, I don't know <laughs> U.S. Navy stuff. You Navy guys will probably get on to me for that one if it's not uh, Captain Obvious. 
Uh, this one here as well. This looks kind of uh, kind of cool. It's got a little stealthiness to it. My guess is this is uh, allows. Uh, this is probably your Spec Ops guys, all right? I think it is. Not 100%, but I'm pretty confident, all right? All right, and then up. Let's see. I want to take us out while we're looking at this. Let me just get us back over here. Just showed you we had uh, a submarine headed out this general direction. And if I get over to Europe, we get into the Mediterranean. And let's just see if we got anything happening out here that catches my eye. It's obviously pretty busy. A lot more ships out here in the Mediterranean than we have seen in the past. We don't see a lot of the U.S. assets, although I know they are scattered all the way around this. We've actually, in fact, talked about that in the last sit rep. But if you want to see why we're looking so closely at what's happening here off this general area, when you get the AWACS plane out here, remember they can also track ship uh, traffic. But see this constant flow going right past the United States. They are very concerned that stuff is getting down here into Mexico and into this area. And that's why you're out here. They are looking at anything and everything that's going past. All right, moving on. Okay, U.S. Navy jets sent to a base in the Middle East to bolster the Israel defense. Uh, showing F-18s, I just showed you all of the flights when we got into the air um the tanker activity. I will speed that up. We'll get over here to the Middle East and you can see the transitions going across. That right there, that's a big indicator. We got fighters moving into the region. You can see them stop in England and then on over into Europe with the broken traces out there. So that is exactly what we're looking at here. It says about a dozen F-18 fighter jets from the Roosevelt carrier have flown to a military base in the Middle East, undisclosed location. Um, but uh, that is why they're getting them off the carriers. They're getting them into uh, land-based operations as well. We've got F-22s over there now. We've got uh, F-35s. Got a, quite, a, quite a bit going on. All right. Now, this is Ramstein. Uh, we're skipping Biggs Army Airfield in Dover because there's absolutely nothing to report on Dover. If you look at the weather happening up the East Coast right now, Dover is very quiet, and that is because you've got all of this activity coming in, and so they've, they've moved and grounded most of their assets right now. So, again, this is flashbang headed home, and uh, this is that storm that just kind of left Charleston. Now, you may start to hear a lot of fighter activity uh, around your home operations in this area. In fact, this morning out at Alliance, I will tell you, I my house rumbled for the last hour because... All of the fighter activity that is leaving here and headed back to probably the panhandle. And so you, you may hear that. Uh, don't be alarmed. But uh, they're pretty loud. You can't miss the fighters leaving. So anyway, if you hear all of that activity, that's what's going on. But we get over here to Ramstein. You just notice you got a dignitary coming in. That's a blue and white Spar 84. Of course, we got several camber, camber flights inbound. And then you can see where they're leaving. You've got uh, some C-130s, C-17s. That's pretty active. Uh, not as active as we have seen, but that may be because of the Dover issue going on. So, all right. This is going to be your Brits. I'm going to back it up just to see where this was. That looks to be Africa where it was located, but um, not really getting. I'm going to have to click on it just to see where it left from and where it was going. Senegal, yeah. Yeah, all right. Notice here, again, we've got... Habal balloons parked out here. So just uh, eyes on it. It's a data point for you. Moving on, we get over here to the Camber flights. I'm only showing one leaving Ramstein, currently airborne, up at the moment. Uh, I will tell you they are very active. We'll look at that here in just a minute in and out of Ukraine. Um, sorry, not Ukraine, but uh, the Ford operating base there um, near Ukraine in Poland. Um, okay, now. German Air Force, look at the amount of activity here. You can see the little two-ship coming out of the Middle East. That came out of, out of here, all right? And, um, yeah, I mean, very active for the Germans. Again, I've been watching them here at, coming out of California. I've seen them up here in Alaska. We knew they were there for exercise reasons. Uh, but then you get down, they've been all the way down in Australia. So they're, they're really kind of spreading their wings a bit. Okay. We talked in the last set rep, just given the fact that uh, Russia said, hey, we know for an absolute fact the United States has 
tactical nukes inside Ukraine. Well, look at this. Here it is. A Russian TV guest floats the idea of a Russian nuclear strike on its own region. Basically, a tactical nuke. And uh, they're saying that's not off the table. So just you know, keep eyes on this. The thing is, when you start to pop nukes off inside Ukraine based on the way the jet stream works over there, uh, you could actually have fallout inside Russia. So I don't know. That would be probably a last resort if they were going to do that at all. So, all right, moving on. All right, here's RZE Poland. Again, forward operating base is Ukraine here. This is Poland. And uh, we get down a little further. I just want to show you the amount of camber flights coming inbound. You've got one here. Go down a little further, a second right here. That came out of Anchorage, Alaska. Kind of strange. Another camber, 747. And I am sure there are more than that. We've got stuff on the board. Let me see if anything else catches my eye. I do see the Brits were in here. Let me see where did they go. Ah, they've dropped off the board. All right. You get over here to the Expil side of the house, and uh, you'll just notice that uh, that camber flight is, is leaving. That's a 67300. Atlas Air is, is going to Seoul from there. National Cargo is in there, 747s. Uh, that's going to probably be air defense, and there's a Coletta 747 leaving also. So those are probably air defense that have been delivered. Okay, let's get into the Israeli side. Well, actually, let me do this. Before I jump over there, we talk the Russia piece. We talk about this. Um, let me just show you the map of what's been happening there. Just to the north of uh, Kharkiv, uh, you can see that uh, been very active Russians are popping a lot off. All those red dots you see there are the Ruskies, okay? So they have been uh, getting jiggy, so to speak, in that particular region, and it uh, looks like their offensive continues. Now, as we get over here, we're going to talk about Israel. I'm going to come back to what I just showed you on the map there. Attacks in Lebanon-Israeli border region intensify ahead of an anticipated large-scale strike. Yeah, they're saying... They fully expect Hezbollah to actually do a bunch of stuff there at the northern end. And then, of course, they will um, uh, probably expand into the Iranian strikes. But this is going to be their proxies between uh, Hezbollah and Hamas, right? And, uh, yeah, so that stuff has been kind of popping off. Now, we go over here and look at the map. Let me just show you. What we're seeing here is nothing more than Gaza Strip, all right? You can see all of those blue hits are, are Israeli, the IDF, striking targets, okay? That is strictly Gaza. To the north, we've been getting some sirens this morning, uh, but it looks to be Hezbollah, and uh, those things, uh, it's just been onesie-twosies, but uh, we'll keep our eye on that aspect of it, okay? Okay, look at this. Do not fly. So we got a no-fly issued over Iran for airlines during an oddly specific night hours. So that is today. It's actually starting to take place this evening. So maybe this is when they're getting ready to do their deal tonight. Uh, we'll see. See what happens. But uh, I do know Delta, United, Lufthansa, a whole bunch of, of airlines have ceased all of their flights in between a Beirut all the way down to Tel Aviv. So a lot of the, the airlines have basically stopped flying into the region. So we'll keep our eyes on this, but uh, the, the no-fly issue kind of gives you a little bit of a window as to when they expect things to pop off. We'll see what happens. All right. Now, this is uh, BESA, which is um, it's basically a strategic study, whatever, <laughs> uh, probably third-party, independent you know, analysis. But uh, again, it says that the madness, insanity, and a nuclear war in the Middle East, they're not taking this stuff off the table. Again, we start talking about the probability if Iran comes in and hits Israel in a big fashion, then uh, Israel may very well pop a nuke off inside Iran, maybe even hit Te Tehran. So if you want to know how many nukes Israel has, it's, it's quite a lot for a little country. You know, you start talking about... 300 miles from end to end on Israel, uh, the fact that they have a range. Nobody really knows the exact amount, but they have a, an, an estimate. Anywhere from 90 at the low end to 400 warheads. 
inside Israel. Now, the other interesting piece to this is uh, the type and what the range is and what the impact could be to the region. The Jericho 3 missile is the latest and greatest. It's got a range uh, around 4,800 to 6,500 kilometers. So that's a pretty big reach of how far that, that missile can go. Now, uh, the other piece, too, is the warhead aspect of that. If you get into it, they say roughly 400 kiloton uh, is kind of the top end of it. What would that look like if you were to pop that off and uh, you look at the estimate of fatalities? This is a website called nuclearsecrecy.com. It's the nuke map. You can go in there and dabble around with all kinds of different scenarios and stuff. But if they were to hit Tehran with one of those 400 kiloton nukes, they're saying that uh, it would kill roughly 865,000 people and injure another 1.7 million. So um, this, the yellow is the fireball radius. That gets you down into this ring right here. But uh, you can see the red is the heavy blast. And then, of course, the radiation aspect and the thermal radiation you can see this spreads pretty, pretty deep across Iran and all the way up into the northern end of that. So pretty bad. That's just one. So is it probable? Eh, I mean, maybe. I, I don't take anything off the table when it comes to this. Something stops Iran. We know this isn't Ezekiel 38 yet. We know we're getting close. Uh, so we know Iran's still going to be here at the end of the day. So is Russia and Turkey. But it uh, doesn't mean that, uh, you know, something big doesn't happen to basically stop uh, the attack from them. So, all right. Well, listen, that's going to do it for our sit rep today. We're going to keep a close eye on the situation. If it goes hot, uh, I may come out and actually put together uh, some type of, uh, you know, over the weekend. It just depends on what happens. And, uh, but if it does, uh, we may come out with some breaking news and, and, and cover the, the details. All right. So. All right, that's it. Keep that powder dry and stay frosty, folks. Uh, we are into a very short, compressed window that things could get very interesting very fast. All right, you guys be safe. God bless. Monkey out. Handcrafted soaps. Get yours in the Monkey Workshop today.